Greetings and welcome to In Depth from DK Ronstar. We have none other than Councillor Tashia Burris, a Secretary of the Division of Tourism, Culture, Antiquities and Transportation, as well as John Arnold, CEO of the Tobago Festivals Commission Limited. They are joining us to speak about Tobago Jazz Experience, the return, much more than music. Welcome to Sholas Nature Park. Welcome to the lovely nature of magic. You just melt in nature. It brings peace and calm to the soul. And looking at that video and just piece of the video so far, I guess we'll get some cover as we continue. I, I, I feel in a little vex. No, we actually saw you post the video of you visiting Sherlyn, Mr. Mr. Arnold, and I we used it as the feel good for one of the evening for one of the evening newscasts. I took the directions on where she's located directly from her Facebook page. So everybody who called me and tell me bloody bay nowhere near Scarborough, I take your point. I should have checked two places before putting it down. But Secretary, let's start off with you. Thanks because. Many times people want to know what is up is about the money. So in terms of expectations, anticipations, what kind of economic benefits to Tobago specifically are we looking at with this return? Right. So events tourism has always been one of the key pillars of our tourism product. And Jazz actually presents the last um, event in a chain of events over the last year since we reopened um, post-COVID. So we started with the Heritage Festival last year. Then we had the launch of our Tobago Carnival. Then we had our Blue Food. We had Tobago Carnival in October. We had our February Carnival celebrations. And now we have Jazz to Return. So that has been an entire year of activities to test that events tourism market and how we have recovered um, post-pandemic. So certainly we are happy to have Jazz coming back this year after a three-year hiatus. Um, we had some bumper plans in place for the 2020 edition of jazz. However, because of the lockdowns, we could not have the edition of the festival that year. We had to cancel 2021. We had to cancel 2022. But we're back in 2023 with a stellar cast of performers, I might say. Um, jazz has a, a different look this year um, compared to what people have been used to. People are used to us being at Pigeon Point and having all the ambience of the seaside. And, and that location being iconic and, and synonymous with jazz. However, because of some challenges with that venue, some environmental challenges, we had some really bad weather last year. We could not use that as a venue this year for our jazz. So we have had to rethink the tool. So that is why we have um, jazz taking place that international night, which is the, the, the flagship night that most people come to know taking place at the parade grounds in, in White Oak Stadium. Jazz returns to the East in Speyside. And one new addition to this year's festival was the inclusion of a gospel night, um, which kicks off the jazz um, experience on Thursday night, which is tomorrow, at the Shaw Park Cultural Complex. And one of the things, uh, and I really like the fact that you're talking about lineup and looking at that chain, talking about sequence. And with that, I want to ask you, please, Mr. Arnold, how important is it that events or festivals these experiences are linked together and looked at as an entire system yeah well i think one of the things about the festival tourism or event tourism um market is that you really want to offer diverse products and um diverse kinds of entertainment um so it's always a mix of those things that are indigenous like the tobago heritage and those things that's going to tease and tempt tourists to come to our island. 
um, or destination. And I think when you look at the events that we do and that we have done, as the Secretary just outlined, um, they all speak to that. And, and remember, domestic tourism is key to what we do in Tobago. We are fortunate to be linked to another island as a nation, and that provides a solid market for us for these events. So I think overall, the idea, and even going forward, the idea of introducing other festivals uh, that can certainly add to the milieu, certainly, I think, you know, redounds to a kind of positive kind of feel for what we're doing to be able. And in terms of positive, there was this addition that you just spoke about, uh, Secretary, and I want to ask, what's the reason for the gospel aspect? Uh, take me through that process. So we felt that um, in terms of covering the different genres of music, that gospel is a huge uh, market that we have been missing out on over um, the last few years. So that including it in the jazz repertoire this year was really strategic when we talk about the return because we didn't want to just bring back the product as people knew it pre-COVID, but we wanted to add some elements to it um, that would speak to that evolution. Um, because we had a, a post-executive council media briefing today where the chief secretary indicated that this would be the last day of what we know as this product called that Tobago Jazz Experience. Because of that, it meant that we felt that we needed to give that platform in this, this, this year so that if we're talking about evolving the product um, for future, that we recognize that jazz is not just the R&B, it's not just the traditional jazz that people come to know, it's not just about the big name artists, but there's a whole genre of, of gospel music artists who want to be able to come and showcase their talents um, in a beautiful setting that Tobago offers. And we have certainly seen that particular market grow. Um, I can plug forward Tobago artists. Tobago has some of the premier gospel artists in the region. And we felt that giving them a platform that the main stage of the Tobago Jazz Experience provides um, could only serve to, to boost their careers and to link them with some of those international acts that we have and possibly look at the growth in that um, segment of the music industry. This year, we are able to welcome Jonathan Nelson and Todd Dubaini to Tobago for that gospel night. And he's actually doing song check right now at the show part cultural complex and I had the opportunity to meet him and he's very excited about being in Tobago, him and his band and, and I know that we're in for a stellar show tomorrow and we just felt that those persons who were really into gospel music that they needed to be part of the experience to see and that was the main reason why we had to include them. I like that show off, show from people secretary so in the <laughs> region but it says so much more than jazz, so much more than RB. And it is much more than music, Mr. Arnold. When you say much more than music, what are some of those things? Oh, yeah. I mean, much more than music actually speaks to all those things in Tobago you can do. And like I said on another media station, there's so many things in Tobago to experience. You talk about Sherlands Nature Park, where, um, you know, the Hummingbird experience. But there's several things. Um, Little Tobago. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place in terms of birding, the rainforest. Um, we have the the man, the the brain coral in space. And I'm, I'm specifically talking about space I because there are things to, to be done. Charleville, you can take a drive up there. If you come up early, go to Pirates Bay. Um, and it's a beautiful village to interact. Um, and so the, the bioluminescent algae and the mangrove, there are kayak tours there. There's several things to do in Tobago. Um, I was also telling a friend yesterday, um, in the days when I took like the catamaran from Montevideo to Cotton Bay, which is a nice, sheltered, reclusive kind of uh, beach. And, you know, the dolphins are there in front of the boats. And, I mean, Tobago has so much to offer, adventure, burden, diving. So when we say much more than music, when you land here, you can go to some great fine dining restaurants. You can also enjoy street food at um, Crown Point, you know. So there are a lot, there's a lot to be done. We have great sites, great historic forts, um, and, and, and we have a great story, you know.
And that story is what I want to start speaking about. And I'll start with you when we return from this break, please, Secretary. We're speaking with Secretary Tashia Burris, as well as John Arnold. In the main, we're looking at the Tobago Jazz Experience, the return much more than music. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking about the Tobago Jazz Experience, the return much more than music. And looking at that story, Secretary, how do you marry taking things forward, increasing offerings, but at the same time staying true to who you are? And, and I, I make the point, one of the reasons I love to go to Castara is because it's not touristy. Right. And... <laughs> I don't. I. I'm not. I'm not a fan of taking out my 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 photo. Um, um, a camera and taking a pic and this and that. And anyhow, if you try to take it out by the ladies in the do stuff, and they might beat you. <laughs> but how do how do you how do you how do you marry that? So I I would tell you that in the last fifteen months of me being in office and traveling, um, going to the different trade shows, World Travel Market London, ITB in Germany, C Trade in Miami. One of the most common things that is being told to us is that Tobago, people love Tobago as it is, the authenticity of the island and how they can have an immersive experience. And the fact that that, that the, the kind of tourist that Tobago um, is attracting now is that kind of tourist that wants to be amongst the locals. They want to stay in local bed and breakfasts. They want to eat where the locals eat. They want to line where the locals line. So that in terms of, of competing, Tobago doesn't have to compete with the Jamaica with its all inclusive. It doesn't have to compete with Barbados that has um, all of these tourists coming off these planes every week, week in, week out. The beaches are crowded, the, the liming areas are crowded. People love Tobago for its undiscovered, unspoiled nature. And, and that is our biggest selling point, I think, at this point. What we want to do is attract the kind of tourists who wants to make Tobago their home away from home. And that is what makes Castara so appealing. The people who come to Castara are not just, they're not first time visitors. They are people who have been religiously coming to Castara for the last 15, 16 years. In fact, COVID was torture for them because they couldn't take their yearly sojourn to Castara. And that is what Tobago has to become. And part of that is having that conversation with the people who live here to get them to understand that a tourist is not just um, somebody with lighter colored skin who comes from the United States and just wants to stay in an all-inclusive and not see where they're visiting. Cruise ship passengers, that is a huge market that we're looking at tapping into. Cruise ship passengers don't just want to come and land in a destination and go to the beach. Because on a seven-day cruise, they may visit five beaches and may not remember the destination except that they went to a beach day. What we're discovering is that push ship passengers for that eight hours that they're on land, they want to come and do something that they will take away some significant memory of the space of. And that push ship passenger must turn into a landed passenger. So what we're trying to do on the Tobago side of things is to ensure that we marry the idea of telling that Tobago story with the products and the attractions and the offerings that we are giving to that international passenger or that regional passenger or even that domestic passenger because if you call the average Trinidadian they may know about Pigeon Point they know about Stobe they may know about Castara but do they know about all the other things that we're able to offer on the island we've actually compiled a list of 101 things that you could do on the island of Tobago and 101 places that you need to visit to say that you've actually visited and conquered and trekked the island. And these are some of our marketing initiatives that we'll be rolling out in the coming months so that people understand that even if you come for a jazz, you're not just coming to experience a music festival, that you should come and you should also, you should you should go take a, 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 a ride on the Buku Reef and, and swim in the island pool as a must that you have to get roast bake and salt fish and the bake have to come from the dirt oven in Castaro or any one of the number of dirt ovens that we have in operation across the island. That if you're lucky and you're coming around the time that we're running goats, because we're not just running goats in Easter, we have goat races happening throughout the year at different times, that you could come and witness that activity with your family. Harvest is a huge part of our social fabric. You're, you're not going to understand it to be a way of life until you walk into a stranger's house and they feed you full and they, they put food in your hand and say, take that home for whoever's home and you drink until your belly bursts. And that is harvest for us, that sharing so that you walk in as a stranger and you leave as family and you come back the next year and you bring some friends. So that part of what we have to do is really get into the habit of selling 
what we have. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to add too much frills to the thing. People are happy with what we have to offer. We just have to tell that story. We have to package it properly. We have to price it properly. And certainly we have to market ourselves. I don't know if it's the age that coming out on my hair and my face, but you saying this and I get nostalgic and pause raising. <laughs> I feel like I want to cry and all kind of thing too. Oh, so gosh. before we get into all that back and all, give me a little bit because in terms of you spoke about pricing properly. Uh, so yeah. let's get back to some of the logistics of yeah. the festival or the experience itself please i'll ask you that please uh, mr okay. arnold what are some of the things that we can look forward to in terms of dates locations and where do people get more information great great um so as i stated early um www.tobagofestivalscommission.com or you can also go to ytix.com um, for the actual tickets but tomorrow thursday we start off with, uh, as I said, a stellar cast. And it's not just Todd Delaney, Samuel Medas, from Guyana, and Jonathan Nelson. But we have a whole heap of Trinbago artists, especially those from Tobago. Positive Blessed Messenger, Chantal Lindsay, etc. Uh, Pastor Terence Baines. And then Friday, I, I really want to plug this in, there's a seafood and jazz um, at Buko Integrated Facility, right? Um, and that, that one is the only free one there. And then Saturday, we have the Space Side Jazz in the East, which features Richie Spice, Everton Blender, um, Brass to the World with Ronnie McIntosh and Super Blue, Second Star, Garden Night, um, Franz Joe, um, and several other artists that's going to make that evening a really great evening. The cost to get in there is 500 for VIP and 300 for general. And then Sunday we have Parade Ground, which we are transforming into a beautiful, beautiful venue. We have the bank, which is a natural amphitheater. It's called the Greens. Then we have the Crowns. And then we're doing something special in the VIP by actually greening it. Um, so that's something you may want to really, you can actually sit down in the VIP on the ground, right? So we're doing that and the, the price is there, $300 in greens, um, 700 on the grounds, and then 1200 all inclusive, only drinks, right? Limited drinks. And we have lots of food, Offerings. We have several sponsors that are on board, free sampling. We have all kinds of things that's going to be there, apart from the great music of Boys to Men, um, and they land on Saturday. Boys to Men, coffee, and then from Trinidad, we have stars like Bonnet Bigford, Tony Paul, Terran Shaw, and Sharon Phillip from Tobago has prepared a production. That's just going to blow the world. We have story time. Uh, we have Stephanie Joseph from Tobago, Kwa from Tobago, and of course, Steel Bar Music, Cats and Jabbers. So it's going to be a great weekend. Great weekend. As, as Vex talking to people like all this, so because I just want the ball, look, my money, if it making <laughs> sense. So, but, Secretary, the last, the last minute and a half is yours. But I want to thank you very much, Mr. Arnold. Thank you very much, Secretary Boris. So the last minute and a half is your secretary. Trinidad, Tobago, the region, the rest of the world. Tobago welcomes you to the Tobago Jazz Experience 2023, the return of much more than music. You need to be here. We kick it off with Gospel Night. Headliners, Jonathan Nelson, Todd Dulaney, Blessed Messenger, Samuel Medas, Positive from Tobago, and a whole host of the best and brightest young gospel stars that you've ever seen. Then we go on to Seafood and Jazz at the Buffalo Integrated Facility. This is a free event on Friday afternoon. Bring your family, good seafood, good music, local acts, local DJs. Saturday night, we head up to the east where we're going to be rocked by Reggae and Soka, Richie Spice, Everton Blender, um, KMC, Ronnie McIntosh. It's going to be a beautiful night. And then we cap things off on International Night, Headliners, Boys to Men. So for those of you who are nostalgic, the R&B, Swooning in your ears, voice to men is gonna take you away. 
coffee, young Rami winner, bright star of the reggae genre, and all the other major cast members from Trinidad, Vaughn Bigfoot, Terrence Shaw. It's going to be a show to remember. We still have tickets available. Get your tickets at Advertise Outlets, Penny Savers, Cache, online. Come to the venue on the day and get your tickets. But do not miss Tobago Jazz Experience 2023, the return. And remember, it is much more much than more than music. Yeah. So while <laughs> while you're not at concert, there's time, there's things and places yes, to 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 so you can yeah. do other things as well. So we want to thank you very, very much, okay. Councillor Tasha Burris, Secretary, Division of Tourism, Culture, Antiquities and Transportation, as well as John Arnold, the CEO of the Tobago Festivals Commissions Limited. This has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstadt. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.